Hello students, welcome to the lecture series of financial market and services and the topic for today's class is money market and capital market and its meaning and the constituents that we would be discussing today. So first of all with discussing about the money market and capital market, let us first understand the concept of financial market. So what is the financial market? So let us first understand the concept of a market. What is a market? Market is a place where a buyer and a seller meet any place so you have a vegetable market what is the purpose of a vegetable market you can go and buy the vegetable so you have few buyers and you have few sellers who are meeting together so similarly the financial market works the financial market is also a market where you exchange something and what do you exchange over here the financial assets now the question is what are these financial assets and why do we need a market for it so for the ease of operations we need this market now financial assets are nothing but these are just the instruments that we exchange let's take an example of a vegetable market again what are you exchanging over there you are exchanging the vegetables over here you have fruit market what are you exchanging over there you are exchanging fruits over there you have a flower market you buy flowers from there so over here you exchange the financial assets and what are those financial assets these are stocks, bonds, any security. So these are few of the financial assets that we exchange in the market. Now moving forward, so we can read the statement financial market broadly refer to any marketplace where the trading of securities occurs. So when I talk about the securities, the securities are the bonds, shares, any gold instrument, any commodity which is taking place. So you have a stock market for this, you have a special bond market for it, you have a forex market. So forex market is where you exchange the foreign exchange currencies. You have a derivative market. Derivative market is where you make your own portfolio, you have your own uh, management, hedging of funds. So you have these few markets where you operate the financial instruments. As I told you, the purpose of a vegetable market is to ease the operations. So the purpose of a financial market is again to ease the operations. So it is vital to the smooth operation you can work accordingly you know where you have to go and from where you have to buy the financial assets if you don't know where from where i can buy the financial assets it's become really difficult in order to understand where i have to go which market i have to survey so that is the main purpose of it now when i talk about the smooth operation say in the vegetable market you have a grofer what the grofer is doing they are selling the product online and you have one offline market also similarly when i talk about the financial market financial markets can be online also and they can be offline also now what are the examples of the offline market so for the offline market you have national stock exchange you have bombay stock exchange for the online market you have nasdaq so you can exchange the securities online also so it helps in understanding from where we have to buy the product second of capitalist economy so we have four types of economies and the one of the type of economy is capitalist economy where you have private institutions also so government is not the only person who is playing an important role the private individuals the institutions are also the important part of the economy so these market helps in the vital and the smooth operation of these economies now again what does they help in they help us in creating the liquidity for the business and enterprises so you have a demand and supply which is taking place so you have money which is being demanded and you have the supply of this money now what happens suppose i am in need of money i can go to this market and i can ask for the money so what it is doing it is actually increasing my liquidity what is liquidity the financial currency the money which i have it will increase and when it will increase what will happen i can spend that money but if i don't have money i cannot buy anything so my liquidity is low so liquidity means wherein you can increase your purchasing power moving forward the next thing that we have to understand in the financial market is the types of financial market so you have two types of financial market. 
first is the capital market and second is the money market. Capital market and the money market have same similar rules. They differentiate only on some aspects. The major difference between a capital market and the money market is the maturity period. For the capital market, the maturity period is more than one year. And for the money market, the maturity period is less than one year. So over here, you will have long term funds and over here, you will have short term funds. So that is why over here it is written, these are the short term funds and these are the long term funds. Now, since these two markets are different, the governing authority will also be different for them. So when capital market is considered, who governs this? Security Exchange Board of India, which is SEBI and for them is RBI, which is Reserve Bank of India. So Reserve Bank of India monitors money market and SEBI monitors capital market. Now, capital market is further categorized into two parts. First is your primary market and second is your secondary market. Primary market, the first market. What happens in the first market? You go with the new issues and new purchases of things. So this primary market actually deals with new securities. I am an organization, I am a company and I want to issue the new shares in the market. I want to issue IPO. I want to come up with my IPO. What will I do? Where will I go? I will go to this market. Now, why do we need a secondary market? If I have only one market, I have a pr primary market. What is the need of the secondary market? The need of the secondary market is I have purchased the good. Now, I want to sell those shares to somebody else also. So, for that also I need a market. So, when I am selling it to somebody else, that is not what I have purchased. That is something which I have already purchased and it is something which is reissuing. So, this is the secondary market. So, what happens over here? You have the old securities. Something which have already been issued, something which have already been brought in, in this market you deal with those commodities. Moving forward, the money market. I told you that the money market is that part of the financial market that deals with the short term maturities. Short term maturities means anything which is less than a year. So money market basically refers to a section of the financial market where financial instruments with high liquidity. Why the liquidity is high? Because you are able to convert your near cash assets into cash in a year. Up eight year, you are able to convert your near cash assets. And when you are able to convert your near cash assets in one year, the liquidity will increase. However, when you are taking more time to convert those near cash assets into cash, the liquidity will decrease. So that is why over here it is written high liquidity. And these have short term maturities. Why? Because the time period is only one year for them. And the components are what are being traded over here, the treasury bills, the commercial papers. These are the terms which we would be discussing in the further classes. Now, it is being used by many participants like companies. Why companies are using this? Why do we need money market? In order to raise funds. So, these are these companies are using uh, money market in order to raise funds and the this is one of the instrument that they are using which is the commercial paper. So, there are different different instruments in which they deal. Let us take the example of vegetable market. In the vegetable market you have different vegetables which you can buy and purchase. Similarly, in money market you have different different instruments financial assets which you can buy and purchase, buy and sell. So, this is something. Now, money market is considered a safe place to invest due to the high liquidity of securities. Your cash can be, your near cash asset can be easily converted into cash. So, it is, a, it is called as one of the safe place where you can invest in. Moving forward, now the next market that we have to discuss is the capital market. Now, what is the difference between capital market and the money market? The only difference between capital market and money market is the maturity. If maturity is high, the liquidity will be low. If maturity is less, the liquidity will high. So, the capital market is the market which deals with lesser liquidity in comparison to the money market and have higher uh, maturity. So, this is the market where buyers and sellers engage in trade of financial securities. And what are the financial securities over here? The financial securities over here are the bonds and the stocks, the market where you can deal with the long term assets. The buying and selling is undertaken by participants such as individuals and institutions. So, 
who are the people involved in this market the people who are involved in this market are the individuals and the institutions now what actually happens suppose this is an individual and for this individual the income is rupees 1000 and the expense is of rupees 800 so what is happening the income is of 1000 the expenses of rupees 800 so the individual is able to save rupees 200 now when the individual is able to save rupees 200 what will that individual do with this money that individual will invest this money where can this individual invest this money either he, he or she can lend this money to somebody else or can save this money in their bank account when this person is lending this money to anybody anybody could be your individual it could be your institution it could be any household so now what is happening this person who is saving money is actually giving it to somebody who, who is in need of money so capital market helps channelize your surplus funds this 200 is your surplus fund which is being channelized now to who to the institutions which then invest them into productive use now suppose there is this in the institution of uh, say adidas so now what will happen if adidas is in need of money it will borrow the money from pool of people and then they will start manufacturing more products it could be their shoes it could be their bags it could be any launch wear it could be any gym wear which they can deal in this market mostly trades in long term securities and when long term securities are considered it means anything which is more than one year it consists of primary and secondary market i told you that the purpose of a primary and secondary market is only to see if you have a fresh thing it will be deal in the primary market if it is something which is the reissue or repurchase or if you want to sell anything then it will be taken then secondary market would be taking care of this moving forward so now the tabular difference between the capital market and the money market so first difference is the participants in capital market you have individual investors as well as institutional investors what are the institutions that are involved in this so you have banks you have some corporate houses you have some foreign investors who actually take place who play an important role in the capital market however in the money market the main people who participate are rbi commercial banks financial institutions financial institution could be your bank corporate house foreign investor anybody the mutual fund agencies so there are many mutual fund agencies where you buy the mutual funds and you deal with that any corporate house the only person who does not participate in the money market is the individual investor so individual investor can only participate in a capital market and individual investor cannot participate in the money market now instruments traded what are the instruments that are being used i told you now you have a vegetable market a big vegetable market you have different different vegetables so you have uh, say brinjal you have potato you have tomato so you have different different vegetables similarly for this vegetable market for capital market the instruments that are being traded are your equity shares your preference shares your bonds your debentures and in money market the instruments are commercial paper which would we would be discussing in further slides your treasury bills your trade bills and your certificate of deposits duration this by far i think you are able to understand the duration for them is more than one year and the duration for them is less than one year or maximum one year expected return higher the risk higher the return so when you are employing your funds for a longer period of time what will happen the risk will increase and according to a risk return trade off if the risk is more the return will be more so this market gives you higher return and this market gives you lesser return in comparison to this because it involves low risk your funds are only employed for one year you would be able to get your funds in a year so that is why it involves low risk and it, that is why it has lesser returns safety I told you this market is more risky that is why higher returns this market is less risky due to which you have less returns 
moving forward the constituents of money market so money market is nothing that deals with a homogeneous market a homogeneous market means when you have same goods same things that are being traded or exchanged it is a heterogeneous market you have different different instruments according to your need whatever you need whether you need a bill for 10 days whether you need a bill for 90 day one days whether you need money for a day whether you need money for 364 days so it completely depends on in how much do you need so now money market is not a homogeneous market it is a heterogeneous market and these are the four important constituents of it so first is the call money market so what is a call money market so call money market is nothing anything that you ask on a call call means whenever you need funds so this is a market which deals with one day loans only so it can be availed by banks to meet liquidity now what is this liquidity so banks are required to prepare some ratios the reserve ratios with the rbi and what are these reserve ratios first is crr second is slr the cash reserve ratio and the statutory liquidity ratio now if i have to maintain a reserve with the bank and i have to deposit certain amount with the bank what will i do if i am in deficit of that fund i will borrow the money i want to deposit say 100 rupees with rbi and as of now in my bank i only have rupees 80 what will i do i will take the deficit of rupees 20 from somewhere this 20 rupees deficit is being met with the help of call money market so what am i doing i'm just taking this 20 rupees from the market in order to complete my deficit in order to meet my liquid day highly liquid you could easily borrow and you could easily convert them into cash so there are no obligations which are involved in this market no collaterals Im involved now what is the meaning of collaterals collaterals means the securities what sort of securities securities which you have to give in order to get that asset the security that you have to keep with the bank the security that you have to keep with any financial institute if in case you are not able to repay the loan loan the bank will forfeit that security and will in cash it so in this case call money market you need no collaterals no brokers are involved so no third party is involved the bank directly borrows from the bank so this you can also say the interbank transfer interbank transfer means these transactions only take place between the banks if they want to take now who are the people who can participate in this market so people who can borrow and people who can lend people who can do both the activities of borrowing and lending so you have rbi which is the reserve bank of india and for any government it is the apex body the commercial banks the different branch of the banks the cooperative bank so you have all the banks because you are doing the interbank transactions so you have all the types of bank this is a new term which is called as the primary dealers now who are the primary dealers primary dealers are the certified institutions who have the license of taking the money from the rbi so these are licensed institutions and these institutions what they do they borrow the money from rbi and sell it to the third party now moving forward people who can only lend who cannot borrow so you have lic uti nabard mutual funds and any corporate house whose turnover is more than 5 crores can lend the money to the banks the people who can borrow then you have dfhi discount and finance house of india this institute was established in 1988 and what they do they on daily basis they bid their price that i want to sell this security and the price for that security is this much if you are interested you can buy it so these are the participants of the call money market moving forward the second constituent the collateral loan market i told you collateral is nothing but just the security that you keep in order to protect your loan so if i am not able to pay the loan what will happen the bank will seize my the bank will forfeit my collateral and will get the money against that collateral so suppose if i am taking a house loan 
um, now this is the house loan for which I have to take the money and I have borrowed 1 crore rupees. So what bank will do? Bank will give me the loan against this property only and if I am not able to repay the loan, bank will take this house. So this house will no longer be my possession. So collateral loan market, the collaterals are involved in this. So in this constituent, the loans are advanced by commercial banks. So who is giving the loan? The commercial banks are giving the loan. To whom? To the private parties for few months. So less than 12 years and approximately for 180 days they give the loans to the parties and these loans are backed by the securities any collateral it could be any stock any bond and if in case the borrower is unable to repay the loan what will happen they will seize the property of that particular collateral acceptance market acceptance market means when you are accepting something. So, when you are accepting something, what will happen? You are giving a guarantee. So, an acceptance market is a short term credit investment between parties. Now, you have a bank. Now, what that bank does? A bank acts as a guarantor. Now, what bank is doing? Bank is giving a guarantee that if person A fails to make the payment then what will happen I will make the payment on his behalf so if person A makes fails to make the payment I will make the payment so bank is acting as a guarantor bank is giving the assurance that I am there to look after the things so these are uh, the, over here the bank gives the guarantee that I will make the payment and majorly this acceptance market is used in the intra country or international trades where you need a bank as the guarantee. So there are many scams which have taken place because of it and since it was a long term thing then what happens that is called as letter of credit. When it is for a long term it is called as a letter of credit. Moving forward. The fourth and the last constituent of a money market which is a bill market. Now bill market is a market what is happening over here the bills are being exchanged. So you have bills which are being brought and sold. So there are two types of bills which are being exchanged. First is the bills of exchange and second is the treasury bills. Now let us try to understand that what is a bills of exchange. Here is a seller A. Here is a buyer B. A has sold a commodity. So, a gift of rupees 1 lakh rupees to B. Now, B is B has failed to make the payment. Now, what B does? B says that I will make the payment to you. Now, there are two things. B says that I will make the payment to you. But A does not have any sort of assurance that whether B will make the payment or not. So what A will do? A will draw a bill. So A is drawing a bill. A is actually drawing a bill and what that bill will be will include. So bill will be a piece of paper here where A will write that B is entitled to pay rupees 1 lakh by 15th October 2020 and what B will do? B will sign. So now what has happened? A has drawn a bill where A is writing that B will make the payment by 15th of October of this amount. So B has signed this. So, if B fails to make the payment, A can go to the bank and take the payment. So, you have two parties which are involved to it. First is the drawer and second is drawy. Drawer is somebody who is making the bill. So, in this case, A is the seller and he is making the bill. So, he is the drawer. You have B who is a drawy because he is signing the bill. So, it is on demand or at a fixed future time a definite sum of money. So, that is a bill of exchange. Second is a treasury bill. Now treasury bill is a just a promissory note by the government to pay a specific sum of amount. So now treasury bills are of three types. 
So, one treasury bill of 91 days, the other treasury bill is of 182 days and third treasury bill of 364 days. What does these days denoting? These days are denoting the maturity period, the amount when you have to return this. Now, there is a this beautiful concept about the treasury bill. The treasury bills are generally issued on discount. Now, what is this discount? If the treasury bill of is rupees 100 and the maturity for the same is say 15th of November 2020. If the person makes the payment by 15th of November and when I say by 15th of November means anytime before 15th of November then the person has to pay 97 rupees which is the discount rate. But if the person makes the payment on 15th of November then the person has to pay 100 rupees. So, this 3 rupees is the amount of interest which is being earned by the person. So, let us move to the definition and try to understand the concept. So, treasury bills are the promissory notes of the government to pay a specific sum after a specific period. So, this is what government says that you have to pay a specified sum after a specified period these are sold by the central bank on behalf of the government. So, who is the selling authority? The RBI is the selling authority and they are usually of 91 days. So, generally they are of 91 days, but you have two other treasury bills also. One is of 182 days and second is of 364 days. So, what have you understood in today's class? We have understood that there is a financial market. Financial market is a place where what is happening the buying and selling of the financial instruments are taking place. You have two types of financial market first is money market and second is capital market. For money market the time period is less than one year and for the capital market the time period is more than one year. When capital market is considered for the capital market you have two types of market first is primary market and the other one is the secondary market. Primary market means new issue and this deals with old things. This is what we have understood. When we talk about the money market, we have studied that there are four important things that take place in the money market. So, first is call money. In call money, what have we understood that it is for one day, no collateral and no broker is involved. The second constituent that we have understood is your commercial bills which is this bill market which is the bills of exchange. So, the second constituent that we have understood is your bill market where we have understood that the bill market are of two types where you have bill of exchange which is being drawn by the seller to the buyer and the buyer signs it. And the second is the treasury bill that we have understood. The th sec third market that we have studied is the acceptance market. What is the role of the acceptance market? Acceptance market is where the bank is giving the guarantee that I will make the payment and it is generally used for the international trade. or any inter country transactions. And the fourth market that we have studied is the collateral market. So, collateral market is the market wherein you keep certain collaterals and those collaterals are being used by the people if you fail to make the payment. So, if you are not able to make the payment your collateral will be sold off and or the government will utilize your collateral in order to realize the money which you have borrowed. So, this was all about today's class. In the next class we would be discussing the importance of money market and then we would be focusing upon the different constituents of money market in detail. So, thank you class.